What's up everyone and you are watching What's Up Ryan and today's episode I'm going to be talking about two tokens that have kind of caught my attention. In fact, they are not really new tokens, they are actually existing projects that have been in the space for quite a while and um, you know I have been kind of uh, putting it off lately and I want to just thank uh, one of my subscribers or viewers who has commented in the in the video about this particular coin. Now one coin uh, that he, he mentioned was Engine Coin. Now Engine Coin, uh, based on what I understand, is a platform where you are able to create a forum, you're able to snap together a website, and of course, eventually it's gonna create its own ecosystem where the, where the items, where especially if you're a gamer, you're gonna uh, be able to create items that are you know, not not going to be uh, duplicated and at the same time, you're able to store those items on a wallet and from there, uh, you are also able to monetize the, uh, the items if you decide to disenchant it or destroy it back to engine coins, which I find very good. Um, personally, um, I've been someone who has not been um, actively playing games because, well, I mean, responsibilities and whatnot uh, has kind of uh, this has has a lot has not allowed me the, the the time to be able to venture into gaming or whatever related uh, latest games, especially because I used to play games as as every young boy does right uh, and especially into my teenage years and even into my young adult life um, I was very much a wow player uh, at the time I was even in the guild and uh, I was actively raiding to be honest and uh, it was really fun because I really enjoyed uh, that 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 process in my life but so much so that I was so hardcore that I almost lost the uh, love of my life who is ob obviously now my wife so guys especially if you are really hardcore gamers uh, I know it's really hard to to pull away from the IRL but it's good to balance out your IRL and your in-game um, you know your cap your in-game life as well because this is something that um, a lot of people can't do the moment once they are very much all in into something right it's very hard to balance and I noticed that the top um, pro gamers especially these days they tend to um, they do have a regime it means um, they work out they, they, in they interact outside of where they are but of course you know, uh, during the day, if they are practicing for a particular game or a tournament, you know, it's very, very serious. It's as if you're working, and I, and I, and I, and I love for the fact that the industry has grown to the point where esports is recognized. You know, and and this is something that was never big during my time. It was at the time there was Counter Strike, and um, I think League of Legends, if I remember correctly. Right, uh, but it wasn't as big as it is now, and right now I think uh, it, it is really more prominent, especially with uh, games like Overwatch, um, uh, PUBG. You have Fortnite. You know, big big streamers like Ninja. Um, you know, all these things are really things that I've never seen like it, the 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 decade before. But right now, what I'm seeing is that it's a great shift. People are taking their virtual life very much more seriously. And we're talking about people spending heavy, heavy dollar, right? Just building up their characters, um, building up their in-game, uh, you know, uh, like just building up their in-game in character, customizing it, even if it's just aesthetics, um, buying a costume, buying a, a hat, and people pay top dollar for it. And 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 I mean, I I mean, um, by the way, uh, Andy, he he likes buying all the Twitch boxes, loot boxes, and I'm not sure what games uh, exactly, but he just loves buying and selling them. So I'm not sure how lucrative that is, but he does do that occasionally just for fun. And um, you know, I mean, to me, I'm I've always been looking at it from uh, how how monetizable is this whole business? Okay, let's let's just be very honest. So so there has it has crossed my mind that I would want e I would eventually want to own a team or at least manage a, a esports team. Whatever the game is, right? I wouldn't really know, but um, I am interested in looking at, at that avenue. Uh, the other thing is um, obviously uh, investing in a, a, a new up and coming gaming company, usually either in equity or something like that. These are just my thoughts, right? Uh, because my my role at, at the end of the day is either as an investor or someone who uh, 
uh, is is uh, looking at building up the space. And uh, I think esports is definitely something that I have been uh, been playing around and toying with that idea. But of course, my main priority right now is to make sure that of course Crypto Grinders, uh, you know, does what it does, which is to educate the masses like yourself uh, about cryptocurrency and blockchain when it comes to investing and trading so let's get into the episode guys uh so this is uh this is something where uh, i've always wanted to talk about so let me let the video explain okay because i don't want to uh, offend anybody um i want the video to be uh, to to explain how engine coin works in this case and uh, let's get to it man uh wait let's see how do i shift this okay so uh, let's let the video do the explanation. I mean, I've watched the video already, but I want I want everyone to watch the video as well, so that Imagine once you un- I mean, I, every investor probably Imagine wants to look at it before I, I get into it. So I wanna put I wanna listen to it too, okay? Imagine that every game has real life value. Imagine having true ownership of items. Imagine eradicating gray market trading. See, so imagine everyone who had the opportunity to own in-game items and at the same time there was no grey market trading and uh, this part was like okay it's very straightforward I am someone who is a gamer I already uh, spent a good amount of time especially getting those legendary weapons rare epic or whatever right and I kind of will get very pissed off especially if someone was able to recreate or duplicate these items and tarnish the value i mean if these va- if the value is even tradable okay so yeah that kind of that kind of immediately like i understood that imagine leveling your character through multiple games now imagine having oops. true so leveling your character through multiple games that part i kind of didn't really get um because I guess, I guess, okay, I guess, right, there are people who play multiple games at one time. So I don't, I don't really understand that part because um, each game, right, would function very, very differently. And obviously, we sometimes have more than one character. So if you ask me, could, I mean, could you actually level more than one character uh, simultaneously? I don't really understand how that works, but hey, I'm actually very obvious to see how, I mean, I'm, I'm very curious to see how that works because I, I, from the top of my head, right, I don't understand. So you guys, if you even understand, right, uh, uh, I, if you guys even understand how that this part even works, um, let's, let me know. And by the way, at the, at the time of this video, right, I own no, en- I own no engine coins, okay? I'm just curious because, um, of course, um, a, 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 another top streamer has kind of looked at it and I mean, I know this top streamer dreamer and at the same time uh, you know i mean i trust his analysis but to me i'm looking at it from a monetary point of view on how sustainable it is so let's get into the imagine leveling your character through multiple games imagine being protected from scammers and hackers imagine fair microtransactions engine coin will make that happen it's a smart gaming cryptocurrency powered by a suite of tools that enable game developers to explore a new frontier in gaming blockchain Here's how it works, explained in five simple steps. Game developers acquire a certain amount of engine coin through an official partnership, crowdfunding, or a cryptocurrency exchange. Developers then use the engine platform and SDKs to create or mint blockchain-based gaming items. These can be anything from abundant items like custom in-game currencies, generic loot and mineable resources, to non-fungible unique items like rare cards, breedable creatures, scarce weapons, or mighty heroes. Once the game is released, gamers can complete quests and win tokenized rewards, loot unique in-game items from vanquished enemies, collect fungible resources, and earn engine coin back gaming. So it, it mentions here fungible resources. So I assume that um, these these uh, tokens, right? Once they, I mean, once the item is created, right? It cannot be duplicated because each um, token, from what I understand, is very unique. So that is kind of like uh, 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 it's a good thing. Okay, it's a good thing because if you spend so many hours as a gamer, right, and then you know, I mean, if the, if there's only so few, okay, is if we know that there are only ten uh, swords in this world. Right, and uh, we want to know that okay, no one else can actually duplicate it through farming or whatever, like e- any any kind of bad activity uh, that that kind of tarnishes the game. I think that is that is something good. It's unique. You know that okay, there are only ten. If I see another gamer, uh, sorry, if I see another player that has it, uh, obviously, I mean, kudos to that person or whatever. But yeah, this is the the part that 
uh, uh, makes sense makes a lot of sense to me so let's look at the comments um okay so the comments they say i uh so deep hall deep house has says not sure i believe the hype of engine um i want to see which game devs support uh which devs support it yes um i agree uh deep house because at the end of the day, this is all um, uh, to a certain extent, right? They are creating their own ecosystem and they also are creating their own revenue stream. Um, they, uh, later on, we'll go into the main website and then after that, we can see what kind of existing business model they have. Assets. Gamers can also use Engine Coin to securely purchase blockchain items from in-game stores or trade with each other. Gamers keep and own blockchain-based items in their private and secure engine wallets. Every trans so right now, if you ask me, uh, if you keep items, right, uh, I only can, okay, like, for example, I did play a little bit of, shucks, I see, I can't even remember that game, uh, oh god, uh, Destiny 2, okay, so, so from what I understand that, uh, if let's say you are someone who plays World of Warcraft, Destiny 2, these days, there's an app, which is the Blizzard app, of course, and then you can see your character, uh, what level the character is, what items the character has, and that's kind of about it. So these kind of in-game wallet, uh, I mean this in-game wallet, right? Uh, I, I, I assume that eventually, and what I hope to see by the way, uh, is a marketplace where you actually can trade the items. This part is so is so frustrating because, I mean there are people who, who want to at least, uh, who are not professional gamers, but they want to kind of monetize it. And I, I think you, okay, so I don't know how hardcore you are and how you value your item, but there are people who are willing to trade off certain items to, to kind of like, like say for example, if I'm a level, uh, level 100, okay, and I've got items that, you know, truly are valuable, but I'm already, I've already outgrown those items and I want to sell them. I don't want to disenchant them. They could be actually very difficult to attain for a particular level, say a level 15 or a level 20. I want to have the ability to at least sell that sell that off, right? And let's say if I sell it off, I can convert that into tokens for me to renew my monthly monthly subscription. You know, stuff like that. And I think uh, World of Warcraft kind of allowed people to do that because there was bind on equip and bind on... There's, anyway, there's two forms. One, once the moment you pick it up, uh, buying on pickup and buying on equip or something like that. So the moment you wear the item and you use the item, you no longer can sell it off, uh, which I understand as well. Okay, but then there are people who are like grinding hard, and they are trying to get this particular item, spending a lot of time and hours. But you know, sometimes they may be a more mature player, meaning they are willing to spend money for all these virtual items. I would I wouldn't mind being a high level character that has a level fifteen legendary item. I don't mind selling to this fellow, and you know maybe maybe through this marketplace, which is this wallet, people can start pinging and say, hey man, I want to exchange uh, maybe uh, five thousand engine coins for this level fifteen item. I'm like, hey man, sure, uh, let's 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 do that. Let's let's exchange. I I really hope to see more of these kind of things. I know that a lot of people are very hardcore. They don't like to pay for stuff, but if you think about it. If you're hardcore, you tend to either invest your time or you invest both time and you invest money as well. Because sometimes you just want your character to look like epic, right? So yeah. Transaction, so, yeah. whether it's trading, purchasing, or selling items, has to be confirmed by the gamer via the engine wallet. In case they're unable to sell them, players can melt their virtual items back into engine core. Ah, so this is the part that I mentioned. Uh, where, where people actually melt the items back to engine coin. Okay, so back in the day, right? Uh, I as in back to 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 my analogy of uh, or my relation to World of Warcraft, you only can sell the item for gold. So in game in game gold at the time, I guess you could purchase um other items, right? Potions or whatever crap that you needed. Uh, and then at the same time, you you needed the gold to repair your items, especially when you went through raids, and then you need to repair your items. Right, uh, and uh, I think right now I'm not sure whether the gold allows you to. Uh, uh, I think it does, where it allows you to buy a token for you to renew your 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 subscription. So that's kind of okay, especially if you're very hardcore. Uh, so yeah, I mean, but this is uh, actually a very useful feature because right now the engine coin, being being that it's traded on, um, uh, I think Bitum and Binance, 
Wow, imagine uh, if you're someone who is a, a gamer, right? Especially if you're a kid, right? And you want to earn some passive, I mean, you want to earn some income at the site while you're gaming and then your mom, right, will be like, hey man, can you stop like playing this and go in like, maybe go and uh, do some land landscaping, you know, for your neighbor or something like that. You may say, hey mom, hey man, that's not true. I'm actually gaming and at the same time, I can sell my items, right? And, and you're doing what you love. You, you're going to be able to sell items that you don't need back to engine coin. And hey, maybe, I don't know how hardcore you are, but you could maybe earn a hundred bucks every week as a kid. And I think that's something that, that it, it teaches you to be entrepreneurial. And it, it kind of, destroys the stigma of uh, young people uh, gaming which is bad right because games actually open your mind to a different world it exposes you to things of the future because people who develop games um, at the end of the day they are either very forward thinking or uh, you know they, they, they have some they, I mean basically they are able to create storylines very well and, and stuff that is very engaging and a lot of uh, adults right especially when once same thing like me right if I see my kid gaming too much, I'll be a little bit concerned because it kind of distracts you away from uh, 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 the you know your studies or whatever. But when I look back and I think about it, right, I played a lot of games and I didn't become like dumb or whatever. In fact, I became pretty smart and you know I was able to interact and think of things very differently. I was very creative in that sense. And because games are always very colorful and fun, and that's the element that I've I've always enjoyed. Right, uh, and, and compared to banking and finance, of course, which is like boring. Boy, yeah. This gives the player insurance, knowing their game items will always hold some value. Melting is a huge value proposition for gamers, making them more likely to purchase virtual items. Join the Engine Developer Portal and start using the Engine platform today. Right, so yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, with regards to that, so in terms of how I, I see it, okay, in terms of price right now, okay, let's let's go into price, okay, so let's do some price action analysis and whatnot. So, uh, market cap now is at 132 million, okay, and uh, the 24 hour volume is very, very healthy. We're talking about across all the exchanges, right, it has a 13.735 million, okay, that means it's really very hot. We're talking about 3,466 BTC traded across, of course, all the main exchanges, the top exchange being Bitcoin. Thumb and, and Binance, which, uh, you know, between the two of them is uh, 6.5 million each. Very healthy volume. Uh, total circulating supply, 700 and 763 million in terms of engine coins. So, you know, uh, uh, in terms of the, 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 uh, the, the, the price, I haven't actually looked at it, but I'm just sharing with you the, 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 the existing token supply and whatnot. Now, of course, let's look at the business model, okay? So the business model, from what I understand, this is registered in Singapore. Uh, I've already uh, researched and they truly are uh, uh, registered in Singapore. And uh, the two owners, uh, I think, uh, I mean, I, I, I probably would want to, to have a chat with them if I can to further understand uh, how they work. And I looked at his LinkedIn very quickly and he's someone who um, actually has been working on engine since 2008. I suspect this guy is probably the same age as I am. And uh, the good thing is that uh, he, he actually dedicated his life ever since after he graduated to build something. For that, I can kind of respect because obviously he probably started the idea um, on his own and it doesn't really need uh, that much. I mean, at the beginning, you don't really need much, right? And perhaps he was waiting for the right window of opportunity to really start this. But right now, what I'm looking at, okay, so so just very quickly at a browse, okay, so so no no offense to any hardcore engine fans, okay, but I'm just looking at it from an investor standpoint. I must be able to understand, okay. So folks, especially if you're new to uh, if you're new to my channel or you've been on my channel. Right. If I'm not, a if you are not able to glance, this is non-financial advice. But if you're not able to understand the business, right, from the very get-go, no matter how fantastic or hyped up it is, don't ever touch it, right? Because you don't even understand it. But for me, at least, okay, I game. I game before. I, I'm starting to understand infrastructure and how businesses are being built because I run my own business. And at the same time, I'm exposed to other businesses. I'm interested. Right in that level. At the same time, I understand gaming because I personally have done great gaming, a great deal of gaming, especially during my 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 younger days. So that's why I'm definitely open still. Okay. So so the the value proposition: build blockchain games, empower your date your user base with true ownership, prevent fraud, increase your revenue. Okay, which I like, and explore blockchain gaming frontier. So you see, this fella right immediately kind of understood that you know if you want to break the stigma. 
okay, of of uh, uh, gaming is a waste of time, blah, blah, blah. And you want to prove it to people who are always skeptical about gaming. You need to say, hey, it's money making. And it's true, as a developer, it's always money making. But what if you're not a developer? What if you're just a player? And how many people can reach to that stage where they can make a sustainable income through gaming? So not many, right? Because you first have to, you know, either you're a streamer, uh, you're someone who, who uh, either you're a streamer, you get donations or whatever, or if you're really, de- really, really good, right? And you're offering a lot of value, you build a, a strong subscriber base and that's how you start earning money. People can start donating to you. But for this, let's see how it works. So, okay, so from the blog, you have an SDK, um so okay so wallet okay that's pretty straightforward you download the wallet uh, and then from then uh, the wallet is made for bitcoin ethereum litecoin erc20 erc721 and erc1155 which i i think 721 is the uh fungible one right where you can't uh you can't uh you can't swap okay there's no swapping i think it's just fixed okay and then the erc115 i'm not too familiar so anyway never mind back to it uh Okay, so you can develop. So I assume that you obviously can develop a website. Okay, you can probably develop a website. And wait, let me go back to NG. Okay, so the platform, right? So the platform is here. Okay, sorry. And then uh, minting. Mint what? I assume that you can mint your own coins. Mint custom blockchain assets. Yeah, okay, there you go. Okay, so you can just click mint now. Okay, let's see how this... Oh, okay. Ah, oh, okay, okay. So you create your own tokens. Uh, 2150, okay. Let me see, 100, ooh, okay, wow. Okay, so there's a there's a model here as well. Hmm. About our minting service, our ultimate goal is to lower the barrier of adoption and enable anyone to create their own blockchain asset to use however they wish. Ah, okay. So the ERC-115, oh, okay, here's the explanation. Tokens created using this service will be fully supported by Engine Wallet. You and your community, friends, and customers will be able to receive, send, trade, hold them forever, or even melt them back. Ah, okay, so you can milk, build a uh, milk. So you can build your own, mm, okay. Mm, so the engine backing represents the amount of engine coins. Okay, backing items with engine in the perfect way to guarantee their value. Okay. All right, I mean, pretty straightforward, not uh, not too complex. And uh, I think I saw some subscription service for you to snap together a website or something like that. So, okay, I mean, per- perhaps there is something going on uh, uh, behind the scenes, right? Like I said, I'm not a developer and I've yet to actually see uh, uh, games actually adopting this, right? Because, yeah, uh, which is back to the comment. I think there's someone who commented just now, Deep House, that if... if I must I must have someone who is creating games to kind of start using my my platform okay so if I'm gonna be creating this blockchain game and I use engine to be one of my core building blocks or protocols or whatever right from there I'm able to create unique items and from then an uh, ecosystem and I and I remember just now you can actually uh, if, if you're someone who, who's creating the game and you're starting a community you even can um, you even can pay for a, a subscription on a monthly basis to start building up a, a community forum or whatever. And then from then, I think everything is integrated. So I think that one is a monthly subscription, more of building a website. So it's not, that one I don't think is very blockchain-ish. It's just a service. But the idea behind it is that, okay, you can start minting your own tokens. And uh, I think maybe when you create your items, I don't know whether that integrates, okay, technical people, maybe you all can fill me in. Uh, and then after that, it's interchangeable. You can start selling selling the items, buying items, and so on and so forth, creating your own ecosystem. Okay, so cool. I get it. Now, only I'm only waiting for more uh, use cases, okay, which is back to the same theory. Now that this thing is all start, started up already, the infrastructure is all there, what is the use case? So the next one I want to highlight is uh, Decentraland. Okay, so Decentraland is, uh, is, is, is a platform where it focuses on virtual land okay so this is not nothing to do with gaming as per se but i find the concept very very unique and i've covered this before on token tuesday or well at least my intern did uh, at the time uh, which is uh, which is uh, focused on um, you know you are able to purchase little virtual lands okay to me the virtual lands are kind of weird because when you can purchase real properties i don't think you want to play the virtual land okay but but that being said there are people 
who obviously want and put, could potentially see themselves building stuff on that virtual land. So uh, very quickly, I think I, no matter what, I still want to go through the video with you guys. Hello, and welcome to Decentraland. Today, I'd like to introduce the marketplace and show you how easy it is to start browsing, buying, and selling land. Okay, so very, very simple. Start browsing, buying, and selling land. So it's like, okay. And I noticed that this is pretty big in China at the moment because, uh, uh, you know, China China, and, 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 and Asians, by the way, love these kind of assets, okay? We, we are like suckers for it, even though it may be a virtual thing. And right now, from what I understand, right, the marketplace uh, is, okay, so I can even go to the marketplace right now. So if I go to the marketplace, uh, very quickly, I mean, the, that tutorial is quite straightforward. So right now, you can even purchase these little grids, right? Okay, so all you are purchasing are these little grids. So let's say, uh, okay, so it's 4.9 cents, okay? So let's say if you wanted to buy this downtown road, okay, let's, let's, do, a, let's do a calculation here. <laughs> so let's say you bought this little 10 by 10, okay, so each little grid, right, is 10 by 20, 10 by 10, whatever, okay? It's, it's a grid, okay? So let's say it's 29,800 times 0 0.049, right? It's 1,460 dollars, man. Really not bad for a piece of land, okay? I'm not sure whether this is legit because it's based on how much people are putting it up for, okay? And, okay, maybe, maybe let me try to be a little bit more upfront and uh, more futuristic. Let's say I assume, right, this is called Genesis City, okay? And if I decided to buy Genesis, or at least I buy a plot of land on Genesis City, okay? So, so this, this, is, <laughs> this is right now the, the virtual land, okay? Guys, this is, this is now the virtual land. And um, yeah, so so apparently, right? You can you can go into this particular area, and then whatever. Okay, I, I'm not entirely sure by. Okay, so this this guy has owned. So so this this guy has kind of owned a certain amount. So so when you click, right? You can okay. So okay. So it's okay. So that so the person right already has owned a certain X amount of land, and right now nobody has built actually anything okay but right now they have people i think there are plots of land that are dedicated so apparently oh wow okay so district x a district within the decentral land to help contain manage cult, curate adult services okay kind of i have my kit here i can't really do that um now we have estate retail okay vegas city oh, okay this probably is the mm, okay right and what is this okay let's see let's click on this genesis plaza Hmm, okay. Let's see what's this. This this decentraland university create the definitive center of education in decentraland. Okay. If I remember this correctly, right? And if I assume that this is going to be what it is, and there's going to be some kind of level of integration. I saw a VR episode. Okay, I'm not sure whether it, it's going to link or whatever, but I saw a virtual reality episode of some guy, right, who um okay, so his channel is called Disrupt. Okay, disrupt. You can go and check it out. Uh, he w he spent one week in a virtual reality machine. Okay, so he so we, he spent and only uh, only occasionally taking five minutes of his time to uh, uh, um, uh, five minutes of his time to switch his headset. But other than that, he was literally sleeping in with the virtual headset, and he was and he was interacting and doing activities uh, in 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 virtual reality. So he even spent some time doing yoga and, 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 it, and it was like a whole uh, Sim City kind of effect, but you can interact. Okay, it, it was kind of cool, the whole concept. And if I see this market, uh, sorry, if I see Decentraland taking shape into what it could potentially be, right? That means, okay, that means, you see, like these days, right? If I wanted to, to have a conference call, I can. I can work from home. I connect with the people in my office. This to me, right, can also be like that. That means I can have remote offices around the world. And let's say if I bought, say, this, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I mean, I buy this building, for example. Okay, okay, but that's a yoga center. Ah, okay, anyway, I, I decided to buy a building and all my staff, right, would con convene and work from those seats and maybe there's virtual uh, floors that you can build upwards, which I assume that you can. And you know the 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 whole the the whole thing is just limitless. There's it's like limitless what you actually can do. 
and if there's going to be a and, and we are able to integrate the communications the avatars and you know a pantry and all that kind of stuff i think that's very interesting for me that's when it starts to get very, very exciting because then people will save time from traveling. They can work from home and they can, you know, uh, I mean, if they need to work, I can say, hey, like, like I can I can drop in into the office and say, hey, guys, how come you're not working? You know, because the avatar is there. Right? The fella has to work means the fella has to work. That's that's one way. And then, of course, if I wanted to have a meeting, my avatar will be there and we all convene. If we wanted to port over to, let's say, for example, the yoga center and everyone uh, wanted to have yoga, they can do that. I think this whole thing is really very interesting. But right now, I feel that this virtual land is still very speculative. Um, there is, by the way, value, of course, right? Because mana tokens, right? Uh, I, I know occasionally they have quite a bit of a spike, especially in price action. But I just wanted to bring your attention to these two in particular. And I know there's other tokens like Tether, Tether Coin, uh, which is integrated into video streaming, right? And same thing, um, it's integrated to Sliver.tv and recently I think they did, they, they, they just launched their mainnet and everything like that. So it's it's starting to get interesting, guys. It's really, start, it's really starting to get interesting. And I, I feel that at this point of time, right, we are... We are still very early. When you're talking about blockchain, honestly, it's still very early. I, I don't want to get people excited because right now, whatever that's being offered out there, the gaming engines are, are, and, and whatever are, are much more sophisticated. I think uh, recently, uh, uh, the, the launch of... Uh, shucks, what's that game? Uh, somebody help me out. Uh, it's an EA game. Uh, 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 it's kind of like to rival Destiny, but uh, shucks, does, does anyone know? Okay, anyway, anyway, uh, it, it, it is quite looks quite fun. Uh, I I know that the 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 the, the avatars the avatars the characters are called javelins, so I can't I can't remember the name, guys. I'm a bit old, so I I know that that is so fun, right? You look at the engine, the way it's being played, it look it looks very engaging, and there are many 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 other examples that I can say and. I don't really know eventually how blockchain can be integrated together because blockchain is just so slow. But if blockchain is going to be part of the monetization, uh, uh, wallet, you know, wallet, and because there's the, because blockchain, no matter what, has a certain level of immutability. And I think, especially if you're a gamer, you want to protect your data, you want to protect your 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 items. All these things are definitely something that 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 is going to further enhance the whole gaming industry. Uh, oh, it's a wait. What's a, it's a shitty game. <laughs> what what game? What game is that? Uh, sir. Wait, I can I can I can sir sir flip flipper star. Uh, okay. Wait, let me see. Let me read read some of your comments. Blizzard shut down early when people were able to sell items in WoW and and Diablo. I know that Diablo wasn't very Diablo or mobile was not very well received, and it actually tanked the stocks. Uh, when when they launched it. Ah, yes, Anthem. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Anthem. Correct, correct, correct. That's the name. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. I see. There you go. See, 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 guys. Gaming is definitely quite fun. And I was. Oh, by the way, yes, I did play Hearthstone, uh, and Magic: The Gathering at the time. And uh, the sad thing, right, is that okay, Magic: The Gathering cards are very, very popular. And then when, if, when, when I first saw Hearthstone as a game, right, especially it, it's all in virtual. I was thinking, I am not spending money on these virtual packs because i used to own the physical cards right and to me i'm like what it's like how am i going to make money from this and apparently you cannot right that's the sad part when you play hearthstone you buy all these packs you cannot make money you you cannot trade the 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 the, the rare legendary cards for anything right and i'm like wow this sucks you know because at least magic the gathering cards Whatever cards, even if I, I sucked at Magic the Gathering, by the, by the way, I wasn't very good at um, creating the decks and playing the game, but I was great at making money because I knew people wanted the Black Lotus and, and Mana Birds at the time and uh, 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 you know Shivan Dragon and whatever. That, that's fourth edition, by the way. I wasn't even early enough. Then after that, there was Jester Cap at the time. You know, all these old school stuff really brings back a lot of memories. And yeah, I mean, at that time, right? The, 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 the better the condition, the card, the higher the value, okay? And of course, there are collectors and there are people who genuinely wanted to use those cards as part of their, their deck creation or deck building. So, you know what? Event I know that this, this space is definitely, or this virtual space is definitely going to be hot. It's going to be pretty hyped up. 
how the integration is going to take place with blockchain. Um, I, I gradually can see that I'm not I'm not uh, 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 being I'm not being a, a wet blanket or anything like that. Just because you know it's still way too far. And eventually, I hope to see a, a kind of an even playing ground because I think there are people who don't like the pay to play where, you know, people who can just spend a lot of money and everything like that and, and they gimp, gimp up their, their character. There are certain games that are meant to be for that, 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 uh, that kind of player because sometimes, okay, guys, like for example, myself, right? Gaming developers really will, 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 will be able to capitalize and monetize on people like me because... I don't have time to go and grind. Let's say we talk about, let's give you the example of Hearthstone. I don't have the the time to go and grind out and play arena, like for example, uh, uh, yeah, like um, Amaz or, or what's his name, Trump, right? Who, who, who are spending and making a full-time income streaming. I just want to play the game. I want to get the cards. And if I want to have, you know, any legendary cards or whatever, I can disenchant and create my gold cards or whatever. I don't have the time, guys. So I'm, I'm very much willing to pay. And this is how peop, how a developer, can, a developer can monetize. Whereas opposed to the younger generation who do not have a lot of money, they or, or they probably they probably have to work very hard or save quite a while before they can save up that $60 or $50 or whatever to buy the game and then have lots of hours of enjoyment that's why they get very that's why i watch all those rage quit videos like they get really angered when their mother shuts down their account or deletes their character and they go really crazy because they spend a lot of time playing the game but to me i don't have much attachment to me i'm like okay i'm here to enjoy i want to spend money and buy the item if i if i you know just own some people while i'm doing it you know it's fun right because games allow you to do that because the moment you have a certain you know item or whatever you have an advantage so i know that you know the whole pay to play thing sometimes like uh, you know the, the, these guys are rich and then they spend money but come on man that's how the world works okay when you have money you have more options you can do more things it's just the way the world works just try to get get with it okay so anyway uh i mean these, these are the fun things that i'm looking at at the moment i hope that you guys enjoyed this episode it's something very different from the usual episodes that i usually do uh, it's a little bit more light-hearted um obviously i will uh, probably uh, when i do decide to invest in it i'll, I'll definitely give a better stronger breakdown and uh, which one i finally decide i'm not gonna pick both okay it's either engine or decentraland that i do want to add into my portfolio um, i want to see the price action at the end of the day i want to understand the fundamentals a little bit deeper uh, which user base is uh, uh, definitely more sustainable in the long run for me or which one i can monetize in the next six to twelve months this is something that i'm looking at okay and uh, right now this is by no means uh, any kind of financial advice or whatever. But yeah, I mean, if you come across any particular token that you find interesting, that is of value to perhaps yourself and you would like me to at least have a look at it and maybe if I find that it's interesting, I wouldn't mind doing an episode on it. So these are the things that we're looking at. We're looking for mature projects. Help me out here. Make sure that these are mature projects. They're not speculative. They've already created a user base. They have some some means of products and service and even better if they are already generating revenue from the business, right? These are the criterias uh, that, that I don't mind looking at and I don't mind reviewing. Hence, I looked at Engine Coin and hence I looked at Decentraland. I've known these, these companies since um, last year. Okay, so they are not new to me and uh, they were successful doing whatever they did at the time. I'm not sure how successful they are today, but as long as they are still having a healthy volume and at the same time, they have a, they've been growing their community uh, pretty, uh, pretty steadily, um, I'm definitely open. So anyway, guys, like I said, I always read your comments, as you can see. Uh, I always read your comments. So Bob, I think you were watching the episode just now. Um, and, 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 uh, and yeah, I mean, like I said, I always read your comments, guys. And uh, whatever comments that are constructive, even if they're trolly, negative or whatever, I still read them. Don't forget to give this video a like. Uh, and of course, uh, if, you, if you felt that it wasn't of value, give it a thumbs down and subscribe to the channel, guys. We want to grow our channel gradually, despite the fact that we are now uh, taking a, a nice shift in dynamics, you know. And, and, and right now, I know that uh, uh, the, the, the whole crypto market is still very quiet. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not as booming, but the market altcoins are starting to look really, really healthy. So start looking at stuff right, right now through my content. If you do not know how to invest, 
um, CG Protégé Group, uh, like I said, we are there to help people uh, learn how to invest and trade. We're educating them. We're not spoon feeding them. We're educating them. And if that's something for you, there is the free portion and then there's also the paid portion. Right now, uh, click on the notification bell if you have not so that you will not miss another live stream.